data variable here. So this can be PID for this process ID. And what we're going to do is call a spawn, spawn keyword. And then we're going to call the fun uh, for the Lambda function. And then our module, so hello program. And then we're going to do hello, which is the function. And no um, parameters there. And then we're going to end it with a period. All right, so what we get back is a process identifier. Now, what we can do here is PID bang. So there's our bang, and we can drop in one of our the people that we're using here. So John, for example. John is actually an atom, so all these names are atoms. And we're passing this atom in now, and I'll do a period, hit return. So we just get back John. So not much is going on at this point. To make this work, we need to actually use a little bit more complex syntax so we can get ex get back exactly what we're looking for here. So what I'm going to do now is PID, Bing, I'm going to use a brace. I'm going to call self, which is the program, and pass in John. And then I'll close with the brace, period. All right, so now we get back this ID, and we get back John. So this is a tuple. And we basically get back another ID and then, then whatever it was we're passing in at this point. So we're, we're not quite getting back what we want. But before we get into why that's happening, let's talk about this program a little bit more. Okay, so we have going in, hello, then we have this receive. Now this receive is basically it's uh, like a mailbox for processes. And what it's doing is we get a PID, and then we get whatever that variable is. So here we have 35 and John. So it takes this process 35 and it matches it with John. Then we go into here and it starts looking to see if there's a match. So John is the who in here, which would match this. So that's how this part is working. And what we're doing is basically sending a message to the program. So we have John. John is a message that is getting sent to the program. So I'm going to clear this one more time. Actually, I need to exit, and then I'm going to quit and clear. Okay, so starting fresh with this, we're going to go back to our spawn. So I am actually, I need to go ahead and get into the shell. And now we can go with our spawn. So everything we did earlier is cleared out at this point because I've got a new shell going on. And I'm going to do hello program. And then we're going to do the parameters, which basically are none. And then we get our PID 35 here. And so I will go with John, and that gives us back John. Then we'll do our PID and call self. John and period. So now we've got our tuple again with 33 and John. Okay, so here's the part where we actually get back the result we're expecting. So I'm going to do a PID. It's kind of like a small program we're going to write here inside of the shell. We're going to do self again and we'll do John with our brace, comma. And then we're going to hit return. Now we're going to do a receive. Now we're going to do the response on this, and we're going to do a minus greater than. Then we'll do one more response and end in this program. And so this is what we get now. We get back, hello, John. And if we go back into this program, we look at what's happening here. This, so we're using the case statement, and we mentioned also inside of Erlang, there's not really a loop construct what we've done is made use of recursion so we're calling hello so this thing goes through calls itself down here because this ends the program then we call it down here again and it it just kind of goes through this loop but what it does is waits for something from the user and then that happens and it calls itself so that's how the recursion is being used in this case now what happens if Let's see, so we have a PID here, that's fine. We have this. What if we do something like 
um, James, which we know is not in there. And that still looks fine. So we're going to kind of go through this. I'm going to go back up to, let's see here, go with James and enter. So things are still going well. It's giving us this 33 for the PID. And let's see, now we need to go ahead and start with this part. So I am going to put a comma and run through this little small program again, response and hello John. So it's it's still remembering what we had earlier. And let's see if I go back, what I'm trying to do is get it to go into the unknown selection. And I think it is, maybe I need to start right here to get that to work. No, because we already have that assigned. So I can just do PID two. And then I think if we use James, then we'll clear everything out. So all right, we got a new PID, that's good. And then I guess I'll need to just go ahead and start with uh, fresh lines of code here to make this work. All right, so next we have our, we got our spawn in place. We're gonna do bang James period. We have James there, then we're gonna do PID two. We wanna create our self, James, close with the brace. All right, so there's our tuple. And if we go back up here and see where we were with this, now we can go with our program that we create. So I'm gonna do PID, see if this will get us into the unknown selection. Now we're doing James, comma, receive. Well, receive like this. Response, and one more response, then end. And that is not the result we're looking for. So I think in order for this to work, probably you just need to go ahead with a new shell. So I'm gonna get out of this and clear, go back into Erlang. Okay, so let's see, we have PID, pound, James, and then we're gonna do PID, and we're going to do open self, James, close that, so there's our tuple. We're getting the same IDs from earlier, so 35 and 33. And now we can create this small program. We'll do a comma this time, and then we'll start with our receive. Then we have the response, response, and end. So will this give us unknown selection? And it does. All right, so it was a matter of really starting the whole shell and clearing out everything that we were doing. And we can see here, whenever we don't use one of the atoms that are in the program, we drop into the default and get the unknown selection. So that is a small program that is a little more complex than what we created earlier, but demonstrates how recursion is used inside of Erlang. And then we also saw how to basically simulate the if then else scenario using case statements. We really got into creating process IDs and working with those process IDs and even how to create a small inline program like we did right here inside of the shell. One more thing that I'd like to show you is the kind of program that is created once we compile things because we compiled several of these programs already and here's our ERL files that we've worked with so far and you can see after we compile, it creates this corresponding beam file. So each of these have a beam file. And what that is is basically uh, the virtual machine that's used by Erlang. So it runs this. This is compiled into C code, but it's binary. So if you open this and try to look at it, you're just going to see gibberish basically because it's all binary. There's nothing really to look at. But we're not running directly off of our source code. So our source file is still there then this is the compiled file that's run by the virtual machine beam.